Okay, welcome to the latest um, Democracy for Developer blog. I am Cliff, I'm the programmer and designer of the game, and I'm going to talk about the stuff that's happened in the last two weeks in the development of the game. We're still in early access and stuff like that. Um, it's worth pointing out that this little dialogue up here, if you've never, if you kind of like gloss over it, basically whenever we release a new version of the game, um, this pops up again for everyone, and it asks you what you think is important um, as a player in terms of like what we should be working on. Uh, I, I should clarify some of these. So, make media censorship affect media spin. There is a policy in the game on media censorship, and obviously that's quite an extreme thing and most people don't do it but um, if you do censor the media someone suggested that that should make the media spin events when it comes up to the election like you know being on TV being interviewed and that it should mean that they're more likely to be positive and I think that's quite interesting it might make the game a little bit easy but then you have to deal with the fact that you've censored the media I guess um, which is quite hard to do Ban strikes policy is obvious, uh, that's obvious, that's obvious. Um, policy flip-flops, I, I wonder about this, about whether or not uh, people know what I mean by flip-flop. Um, I'm told in, I think New Zealand or Australia, they call flip-flops daps. Um, I think it's daps, which is slightly, slightly weird. Anyway, whatever. Um, so a flip-flop, which comes from the, the kind of shoe that you wear on a beach. Um, anyway. A flip-flop is when you implement a policy and then you cancel it. Or you cancel a policy and then you re-implement it. So what it shows is indecision in the game. And uh, we penalise you for that. Um, you will get, I think it's a trustworthy perception um, impact in the game. So that it's already been modelled and it's already in the game, but we don't tell you. So we don't pop up an event going, hey, that played really badly in the media, the fact that you just flip-flopped on this policy. Um, so I want to know if, if people want me to do that. Also, I want to know if the word flip-flop makes sense to everyone. Um, policy reversals, maybe. Anyway, whatever. Um, remember sorting settings. You know sometimes where you, you change the sort order of certain um, list of effects. Um, I mean, I, could, I will get around to doing all of these things. It's just what do you think is most important. Anyway, I'm just going to launch a game, pick my home country, just for lols, and go through some of the stuff that's happened. So, um, we have updated the game to version 1.14 um, a few days ago. I think, was it a few days ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't long ago. Um, and that was quite a big change. There was quite a lot of stuff uh, in there. Some of it was like under the hood stuff, and some of it was um, stuff you'll know all about. Um, anyway. I'm going to kind of like run through some of the things that we changed. Um, Australia wasn't as accurate as it should have been um, in terms of some of the uh, the industries were set to being um, nationalised when apparently people said no, they're not really nationalised anymore. Anyways, we we tweaked a few things about Australia based on feedback, and that's that you know that's always really good. Um, one of the other things we did is um, veganism which has been renamed actually, it's up here somewhere, plant-based diets, isn't it? Um, just toggle onto there. Um, now actually affects CO2, which of course is accurate because meat eating um, is a pretty big contribution to, um, to carbon emissions. So if plant-based diets goes up, then that reduces the amount of CO2. Um, that was an effect I knew all about and I just like kind of like forgot to put in. Um, anyway, that's in. We added a new policy, which is retirement age. Um, where are we? This is it here. Boom. So this is new. You can set the retirement age between 61 and 75. 75 is being a bit cruel, I think, <laughs> frankly. And 61 is, uh, or 60 rather, is being a bit kind of like, really? You can't have people retire at 60. Anyway, so we've set the right value for each country. I think it was... Um, a bit of an omission that this wasn't in because it is kind of a hot topic um, in the UK we keep like nudging it up so depending on your age there are some people that will retire at 65 and some people that will retire older I think I retire at 67 or something like that um, I'm not entirely sure um, anyway obviously um, if you if you make people retire earlier uh, th then their jobs become available so there's an impact on unemployment 
um, you're making more people retired, obviously, so that changes that group. And um, trade unionists absolutely hate it. Productivity is related because um, the longer people work, it's kind of better for society if people don't retire um, super young because you've done all the like, like training and skilling up. If you only work for a certain number of years and then retire, um, that's kind of like a productivity kind of minus, really. Ideally, from an economic point of view, we would all work until we die. Um, obviously, that's not socially desirable. Anyway, it's in there. This is a new policy. Um, you can't cancel it. You can tell you can't cancel it. You can just adjust it. And it's something that you can use to annoy trade unionists or increase productivity or please trade unionists, you know, whatever. Um, so that's in there. Um, talking of flip flops, so um, there is a thing in here now. If you look at, at the donors, um, you'll notice every now and then that the donors pop up and sort of say, hey, it would be great if you could implement a certain policy. Um, and they'll quit if you don't, okay? That's already in the game, that's fine. What I've added is this thing that if you implement that policy and then later you you cancel that policy, they now notice. Um, they never used to notice and they do now. And then they quit immediately without any warning. Um, we should have, you know, had that in a long time. Uh, so that's in. The events have been rebalanced. So stuff that happens like, you know, plane crashes and stuff like that. Some stuff was happening too often. Some stuff wasn't happening often enough. That's all been rebalanced. Hopefully it's better, but we'll, we'll go through several kind of like passes at that, I would have thought, because um, it's quite tricky to get right. Uh, we have a completely new thing. Let me just quit to the main menu. Um, if you go to the compass here, um, if you haven't seen this, this, this is the political compass that is in the game in, in, in various sort of guises. Um, so this is the last 50 elections that I won, what country I was playing and, and how I won them. Um, I play the UK a lot. I'm quite surprised I end up over there, actually. Um, I would have thought I'd be more sort of over here. Anyway, whatever. Australia, Germany. Um, so this is this is like a local high score table, okay, in that this is just me. Um, you can also, if you're logged into Steam, you get an extra button, and then you can see where your Steam friends are on average for all the games they play, which is kind of cool. Um, but we've got a new thing now, um, which is the kind of online version of this. So what happens is whenever you win an election anonymously, we, we record the political compass location and um, what country you were playing um, on a server. And each month we reset the stats. And so for this month, this is where the countries are, which is quite interesting. This isn't people playing from these countries. This is people playing those countries. So. Everyone who's been playing America, on average, they've tended to win here. The French have tended to win here, and so on. We're all clustered in one place. Uh, that's partly because we're in early access and the game isn't completely balanced, obviously. Um, it's also because we are playing a lot of kind of fairly liberal and kind of moderate, apart from the US on capitalism, maybe countries. As we add more countries, hopefully we'll be more all over the place. And I want to add some very conservative countries and stuff like that. Anyway, so new features, this fun. You can like look here and go like, uh, okay, I tend to win um, very socialist as the UK, but actually people are tending to win fairly capitalist. Um, I don't know, it's interesting, it was easy to do. Um, so that's in, let's go back. Let's, um, let's pick the US, and talk about other stuff. Um, so that's it. There's been a big performance boost. Um, you probably don't notice unless you've got a really um, low spec PC. Um, but basically, I don't want to get too technical about it, but we reduced a lot of the draw calls. So every time you draw something on the screen, that's a draw call. And ideally, you don't draw each thing individually because there's several thousand things on the screen here. Um, believe it or not, if you if you add up all the little things, um, ideally you batch them. So anyway, we did a lot of batching um, and a lot of really fiddly batching. Um, one of the things that made a big difference on this screen, and this screen is still the slowest. This is fine if you do this. This is the nightmare situation for me as a graphics programmer. <laughs> okay, um, th this is quite hard for for me to get super fast and super smooth because this is all vector graphics and stuff like this. Um, 
and it, it's all super crisp. It's, it's quite hard to get this right and to get it at a smooth 60 to 70 frames per second. Um, one of the things that made a difference is that we used to draw all of these little tool tips, the little blue pop-up things with text. We used to draw them all individually and the reason we did that is because they overlapped. You can see down there at the bottom Actually, most of, them are, uh, most of the overlap is obscured by my logo. But if you look up here, you can see where two of them overlap, where a bunch of them overlap. Um, that's a pain, which means that you can't draw them all in one go because things get out of order. So you had to write a little bit of code that sort of says, do they overlap, do they overlap? And then you batch them until they don't overlap. Um, and then you, anyway, it's a bit fiddly. Anyway, everything's faster now. Um, than it was before, this screen's faster, loads of things are much faster. If you've got a really low spec PC, you'll notice. Anyway, we did that. It took ages, I mean, it took two days to go through and, and do all this. Um, so we've done that. In terms of playing the game, the thing you'll notice most is that the party system has kind of changed. Um, let me load up an old game. Um, to see if I can show you that in more detail. So if I load something just before the election, pre-election, cup of pocket. I think that's one. Um, no, it isn't, but it it will be it'll, okay. At least it's slightly more interesting. Um, okay, this this takes some explaining, right? But basically, in a two-party system, three-party system is a lot more complicated. In a two-party system, there is a threshold at which um, people will vote for the other party and at which they will consider joining the other party. And in a two-party system, that's 50%. So 0% happiness, we're talking about, they hate you. 100% they love you. 50% they're indifferent. So below that, they'll join the other party over time um, and vote for the other party. Above that, they'll vote for you. So what we have now is a dynamic system that pushes that stuff towards the centre of gravity of the electorate. So you can see here where all the voters are, right? They're up here, so they're fairly happy, generally. Okay, how am I, how am I doing? I'm doing kind of, you know, not, not too bad sort of thing. Um, so they're fairly happy electorate, generally. So imagine that 50% line is, is here, and the red party is below and this is where they're getting their support from. What this new system does is it adds opportunism. So the Democratic Party in this case, they will look at their policies and they'll think, we're getting crushed. <laughs> Everyone, um, even if they haven't um, completely gone over to voting for the other party or joining it, they're thinking about it. So they will alter their position. You don't need to know what their position is, but what happens is they alter their position to be closer to you if the electorate are closer to you, because they're moving towards the electorate. So the magical invisible 50% line at which they'll join the other party goes up. So they will gradually go up and up and, and move closer to you. So people who are currently like, um, you know, 65% happy, for example, will currently vote for you. But over time, the opposition will um, alter their policies and 65% happiness will be a vote for the opposition because they're quite similar to you and you're gonna to need to be like 65% or more. Um, in fact, it, it's 20%, so it'll go from 50 to 70% over time. So this is a bit of like play balancing, but it's also a bit of reality. So if you live in a country, and I'm sure loads of people do, where um, a party keeps winning who you really don't like, say they're far too right wing and far too capitalist, um, a lot of people on the left in that situation will get frustrated that the opposition party isn't left-wing enough. They'll sort of say, oh, you're just like going along with, you're becoming centrists, you know, you're going along with um, what the ruling party likes. And they're doing that because they can see where the, the centre of gravity of the electorate is. It's really hard to change that centre of gravity um, unless you're in power. And then when you're in power, you can pull it back by having long-term like social programs that change people's opinions and drag them back in your direction. Anyway, this is a new thing that's in there. Um, I also fixed some bugs because we have a system where you always vote for the party you're in and that was breaking in certain circumstances. Anyway, the party system is better. Elections will be more balanced. Hopefully there will be a higher percentage of people who will end up in coalition governments because the results are tighter because 
middle parties will be moving quite close to your political position. Anyway, a few other quick things that went in. Um, if you have ever looked at putting in a flat tax um, here, um, it now has a conflicting policy, which is income tax. We've got a few policies that conflict now. This is a new thing. Um, I don't have the capital for this. But if I did and I went to implement it, it will come up and say, this will cancel income tax. It does it for free. You don't need the political capital to cancel income tax and implement um, a, a flat income tax. It's because those that those policies didn't really make sense together intuitively and it was a bit of a cheat to have both of them running and we have a few others like you can't legalize gay marriage and also ban homosexuality for example for obvious reasons um, so that's a new thing we now have opposites um, so that's what has gone in the game and what has, has changed and improved the game um, recently I always feel in videos I should point out that you can do this <laughs> um, because it's kind of cool to work out what the um, unpopular policies are and stuff like that and also I, sh I should feel every now and then that I should point out that you can play the whole game in dark mode um, because you know it's not immediately obvious if you only see screenshots and you don't own the game and a lot of people just don't know it's in there you know you can play the whole game in a kind of um, save your eyesight mode um, it's kind of cool I think I prefer the normal one um, but it's up to you um, and we've got uh, colorblind modes in there as well I should point that out um, the these are colorblind light and dark uh, and you can edit your own and create your own color scheme. Uh, it's just a text file. Um, if you look on the little, like uh, the modding and stuff, it, it should be obvious how to do it. Anyway, so what's coming up is um, I'm going to rebalance a lot of the, the dilemmas. Some of them happen all the time and they're annoying. Some of them hardly ever happen, and I want them um, to happen more often because I want people to experience more of the game. Um, I know that immigration needs some balancing, and we're going to be working on balancing that because ethnic minorities can get stupidly high, like they are here 48%. Come on, um, that's a bit unbalanced, and I need to fix that, and I will fix it. Um, in the next, well, uh, possibly in the next two weeks. We've got a list of stuff. We've got a Trello board that tells you um, what I'm working on, stuff like that. Um, I think that's that's pretty much everything. That's quite a lot of stuff for two weeks, isn't it, basically? Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the new stuff that we've changed. Let me know if you've got any problems um, and um, ideas and stuff like that. And I will see you in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, etc. Goodbye.